the synthetic materials in chemistry, biotechnology, and nanomedicine, Trondheim, Norway. Thank you. So good evening, everyone. So uh, yeah, I will talk about how we can evaluate nanoparticle regulation, both uh, using quantitative and qualitative determination methods. And uh, so I'm a senior research scientist at Synthev. Synthev is uh, an independent research institute in uh, Norway with the headquarters in Trondheim, and this is the largest research institute in Scandinavia. And we're working on pegative nanoparticles for drug delivery. And these nanoparticles, they are made of a biodegradable polymer, polyalkyl cyanoacrylate. And this is the same material that is used as a medical adhesive in surgery. So it's biocompatible. And we can also control the degradation. Uh, the particles can be made of various sizes from approximately 80 to 200 nanometers. Uh, we can control the size by controlling the type and uh, amount of surfactants. And uh, the way that we make these particles uh, is by mini emulsion polymerization. And by that we can have very high drug loading capacity and also high encapsulation efficiency. Uh, the particles are non-aggregating and they have a very long shelf life, up to many years. Uh, we can also do surface modification to get tar uh, targeted particles. And so far we have been doing encapsulation of drugs and antibiotics, mainly the drugs for cancer. Uh, we have also encapsulated fluorescent dyes and amyl contrast agents, so we are able to track the particles quite completely. Uh, we do both in vitro and in vivo studies. Uh, in vivo studies have been in rats, mice, and rabbits so far. So, but I'm going to talk about uh, how we can pegulate these particles and how we can evaluate the pegulation. So first of all, I want to tell you how we pegulate our particles because there are many different approaches. We use a pro approach where we have actually, the peg is actually the surfactant or the stabilizer of the particle. So the pegs are uh, uh, amphiphilic, so they are uh, block po uh, polymers of uh, hydrophobic, uh, with a hydrophobic chain which goes into the particle and then the hydrophilic chain which is the peg. And the hydrophobic chain has some type of uh, reactive uh, group, it depends on what uh, peg we use. And this reactive group reacts with the monomer starts a polymerization. That means that the particles have a peg that is covalently attached to the surface. So it's covalently bound, this peg, to the surface. And uh, both the type and the length of the, of the peg can be varied. And we have tried out uh, numerous amount, num numerous amounts of uh, different types of pegs, both branched ones uh, uh, and uh, different types of length, uh, long, short, and medium length. And uh, I'm going to present uh, four different strategies. So here you see a medium length peg, a low plus medium length peg and high plus low uh, length peg. Uh, and uh, so we chose these four uh, now and then we have to evaluate which is the best candidate for the different uses. And to do that, we need to understand better the pegulation uh, of the particles. So how can we do that? How can we evaluate the pegulation? So we have been using both direct method and indirect methods and I will go through some of these methods. <coughs> First of all, we have been using proton NMR to quantify the amount of peg on the particles. And this has uh, shown to be a quite nice method for us. So we use the spectra from, from NMR. And uh, here you sh see uh, a distinct peak from the peg and from the polymer material. And we use these uh, spectra to calculate the number of peg molecules on the surface. And what we see is that there's a clear difference between uh, the amount of peg that we have on the, uh, and the density of the peg that we have, have on the particles depending on what kind of strategy we use. And we further see that actually lower density uh, is gained when we have long peg molecules because of stereotinnins probably. Uh, another direct method that we have tested is surface analysis. And in this case, uh, toxins. This has been performed uh, by the University, uh, University of Nottingham uh, by M M Martin Davis group. And uh, this is an example showing that 
you can see differences. This is not a qualitative no, or quantitative me uh, measurement, it's qualitative. So you can see uh, it's a comparable uh, method. So compare different types of particles internally. And uh, we use different, uh, uh, different uh, chemical groups on the peg to, f to analyze what we have on the particle surface. And what we see, we see the same trend as we saw for, for NMR, so that's, uh, that's good. Uh, <coughs> to some of the indirect methods. There are ver various types of indirect measures, methods that can be used. Uh, one very easy one is to look at the stability of various media and uh, biologic biological fluids. And we have been looking at cell culture media, also with added SPS, and the human blood serum. And we also see that the stability, uh, not surprisingly, is uh, depending on the peg. So pegylation affects stability in various media. This is a very simple method to use and can be applied to all kinds of different particles. Another very simple method used to use is to determine the uh, surface charge, the total potential. And our particles without any peg have a quite high negative charge. And as soon as you start to pegylate the particles, uh, you see here, uh, the higher the, the peg, the more the peg, peg we have on the particles, uh, the less charged particles we get. And when we have highly pegylated particles, they didn't, don't have a high charge anymore. So this is also a very easy method to evaluate pegylation. Uh, a third method is to look at photon absorption. And of course, there are numerous methods to do that. We have chosen a very simple one by measuring this increase of size. As, uh, so how much the particles increase when they are added to a medium with different concentrations of uh, serum albumin. Here we have used 8% uh, serum albumin and you cl clearly see that uh, the more peg you have on the particle uh, surface, the lower is the photon absorption. So less increase in size when you have more peg. Uh, so the last thing I want to show you is how we can uh, use the blood circulation half-life to evaluate pegylation. This is probably the most important one uh, because that's what we're interested in, long circulation time, at least for some of the, uh, some of the, uh, the, the things we're going to use the particles for. So we have been doing this for with two different approaches. One is by encapsulating a near-infrared dye and evaluating the, the circulation half-life in the whole animal imager. And we have also used uh, encapsulated uh, 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 nine red dye and uh, looked at, we've taken blood out of the animal at different time points and uh, analyzed the dye uh, in the particles um, using a plate reader. And what we see is that blood circulation half-life in mice is highly also affected by the type of peg and the, pe and the strategy that we use, not just the uh, amount of peg. So what we see is uh, that actually the particles with the highest blood circulation half-life were the ones with a combination of low and high molecular weight peg, even though they had a lower density of peg compared to these ones. So to conclude, uh, not only the amount of peg but also the pegylation strategy, that means both the type and the molecular weight and so on, is of great importance and has to be considered. Uh, pegylation efficiency can and should be determined by both direct and indirect methods that can, can uh, uh, so you can use not only one method, but to look at many different ones, because one method is not enough to determine your system. So uh, I want to acknowledge my colleagues at SINCEF, uh, Richard Mead and Einar Wilhelm are at this conference, and also collaborators at uh, NTNU in Trondheim and the University of Nottingham. And uh, this was funded by the Research Council of Norway. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. We have time for some questions. I have one. Did you characterize the, the particles uh, after the encapsulation of the fluorescent dye? Yes. Uh, they look similar, the size? Yes. The amount of fluorescent dyes is very low. So it doesn't affect the surface of the particles. And did you try to, to encapsulate any, any drug? Yes. Yes. 
we encapsulate many types of different pedostatic drugs, for example. So we're all hydrophobic drugs. And uh, we have not done these same measurements for, uh, for those ones. But, for but in ones terms of I size and zeta potential, they, they look similar. Yes. Yes, and the encapsulation yes. percentages are? We have now for uh, the highest one is 15% uh, for uh, cabacitaxel. Okay, mm. thanks. Any other questions? So thank you.